Now, a lot of players visualize the backswing as being a motion that goes across your body. So my arms are kind of going across my body this way. It feels really tight with my left arm. A lot of times my left elbow will break down right away. And we just end up getting a lot of hand interaction when we're doing that motion across the body. And a lot of times you feel like you're all hands and arms and there's a lot of manipulation there. Well, the backswing is actually not across the body. It's this motion right here. It's almost like putting my hand over my right shoulder. And if I can just lift my hand up over my right shoulder, that's exactly what the golf swing is. And we'll go ahead and add the left hand to there. This is the top of the backswing position. So if you can do this correctly, you can nail a perfect backswing. Now here's what I mean by this. I'm doing this motion at the top of the backswing and I'm adding it to this motion, which I'm rotating my body back and I'm rotating my body through. When I put both of those things together, this motion with the rotation, that's when I get a golf swing. So let me break it down for you. Let me get the perfect position to show you how to do this where you can see your hands in front of your body. Then when you add the rotation, we're gonna be hitting that perfect backswing position time after time. So first let's talk about where the setup position would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and address this golf ball here, getting a good setup. And if I stand up out of my posture, my hands would be right here. They're slightly in front of what would be the golf club head or the golf ball. And they're about waist high. So I'm just bending forward to put them to the ball. I'm standing straight up so that now I can see my hand position. Let's go ahead and lose the club and the left hand for now to make things easier. I'm gonna start with my hand kind of in front of my left hip and I'm just gonna fold it up to where it's about eye level height. It's over my right shoulder. So I don't want it here in front of my body like this. I want it to be kind of on the outside of my right shoulder. If you have a lot of flexibility in your right arm, you're gonna be able to turn that forearm to where it's straight up and down or even slightly out like this. I don't have very much flexibility in my right shoulder, so my forearm is gonna be slightly in. Totally fine, just means I have to move my arm, my upper arm a little bit more out that way to get it in a good position. Now, a big mistake here is when a lot of players think about this arm going across, is this right arm really bends close to the shoulder. It should be wider out here like this. So if I imagine this being in front of my arm, this would be kind of in line with my face. That's way too much to the side. I wanna keep that width or keep that hand in front of me on this position here. Now, the reason that's so important is in a golf swing, if we have it out in front of us versus beside us, well, if it's beside me, all of a sudden that left arm bends and this club is getting way too deep this way. If I keep it out in front of me, now as I rotate, I'm keeping that width. You hear all the time, great players, great pros talking about keeping that width back and down, that's what they mean. Hands a little bit more this way rather than being sucked behind them like that. That sucked behind them position is these hands really close to my body rather than keeping that width like you're seeing with the top pros. So that's pretty much it. Starts at the left hip, folds up, eye height outside the right shoulder, forearms basically up and down, a little bit of width here, and then the final piece is I'm gonna have this hand angled like this. If my hand was straight up and down and I was gripping the club this way, that would be a across the line position. If I angle that club shaft out to the right like that, as I bend in my posture and get into my backswing position, that would be on plane. So once I have it here like this, I'm simply just adding the left hand to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep my left arm straight. If you're not feeling like you can keep your left arm straight, again, you've probably lost that width. You've probably bent this hand way too close to your right shoulder. Get a little bit farther out there like that. Perfect backswing position. Now, if you think about it, well, I'm gonna go back from my starting position, hands in front of the left hip, club head where the ball would be, or I'll go here again and show you. There's my address position. I'm actually, I'll be a little fine tuned here. My spine angle when I'm doing this is actually leaned a little bit to the right. So when we set up to the golf ball, we want a little bit of tilt to the right. So if I'm setting up truly like I am at address, I would be leaning a little bit this way and then going to the top of my backswing position. Now, I always like to visualize this as almost like a, a karate chop. Like I'm almost taking this club in my right hand and chopping it down. And it's at an angle like that. This is incredibly important. We don't wanna feel like it's going straight down like this. That would be way too steep of a club shaft. And I'll get to that here in a minute. I want it to be at this angle and I'm feeling like, almost like I'm just chopping down into the golf ball. A great little visual for this. I have an impact bag from Eyeline Golf. Uh, if you want one of these, I'll put a link down below. 
One of my favorite impact bags here. I make a few bucks for it if you buy it from that link. You don't have to have a bag. You can roll up a, a old pillow or something like that. This is great for a lot of drills though, but the way I'm imagining this here, let's imagine this is an impact and I almost have it angled like this. So I'm gonna go ahead, set up in my normal position. I'm gonna stand up in front of me, like we just talked about our starting position. Well, that's about where this impact bag would be. And if I'm making the top of my backswing position to impact, it's like I'm chopping into that bag. That's a great feeling to have for the correct golf swing. Now, another piece of that, if you wanna shallow out this club, you don't wanna chop down vertical, like I said. You imagine the hand angle is like this. I wanna keep my club on this side of that hand angle. That's shallow, that's from the inside, that's what would be lag when I'm in my normal golf swing. So my club stays on this side of my hand angle. So if you imagine that here's the angle of my hands, I make sure the club stays shallower than that as it's coming down. And that would be perfect for what we're doing in the golf swing. Now all you have to do is bend over in your posture, rotate back and through, and you pretty much got it nailed. So let me give you a little surefire way to get the rotation right. So we've done the hand angle to get that at the great position at the top of the backswing. Again, I'll go over that here. That would be this in a real golf swing. All right, picking that club up over the right shoulder. As I'm in my posture, that looks like a normal swing. Now the second piece is, I'm gonna put this club inside my right ankle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a club across my shoulders. Now make sure it's all the way up at the top of your shoulders here. As I go to the top of the back swing, I'm just gonna rotate until that club is over top of the club on the ground. So if I dropped it, if my leg wasn't in the way, this club would fall down and fall directly onto this club. If you wanna do one better than that, rotate past that club. So I'll put the grip in, kind of sticking out so you can see it. This would be great. If I go a little past that, that would be even better to where my club rotates here. The reason I have this club on the ground is I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna to fall to my left now I made a bad turn, and if I drop the club, it would be way over here somewhere. I wanna get a weight shift over to the right and get my club on my shoulders matching that club on the ground. That's the backswing. Add a little bit of a tilt or an angle to it. Now you're swinging on a plane, just like you are in the real swing. And as I finish that, I'm gonna come all the way around, and I'm gonna feel like the, if I stick this grip out of the right, my right shoulder, as I come through, I'm just gonna feel like I get this pointing toward the target as much as I can. Now, if you're not very flexible, it's gonna be very important to let this left foot rotate open in the fall through. It's also gonna be very important to get the right foot all the way off the ground to let everything turn on through there. But then again, that's the backswing. I'm rotating back, I'm rotating through as far as I can. That motion with this motion is a golf swing. So. Practice each of those individually, and then once you get the feel for them, you're just gonna put both of them together. This is exactly what I feel like I'm doing when I make a real golf swing. My golf swing to me feels like I'm doing this. Like I'm almost just hitting into the back of the ball just like that, and as you rotate back and through, it, it just feels very repeatable. It takes all my hands and arms out of it because when I'm doing this, again, I can get a lot of lag in this club angle, and then boom, let that lag release. It just doesn't feel like I'm having to manipulate it. I'm controlling it with my lats, kind of the same motion you would be doing if you're pulling this way, using the big muscles in your back of the lats. That's an easy way to get speed there too. So here I'm gonna pull down into the back of the ball. Let's see if I can do a decent shot. There we go, nice little draw. Coming back in toward the target. Not gonna do a lot better than that. One of the first swings of the day, 193 yards with a six iron. That felt pretty daggone good. Now, there's a big piece of this that I mentioned early, early in this video. I don't wanna feel like I'm doing this motion, pulling this way. It's more of this type of a motion. That's actually a big key and something I'm gonna go over here in a second that's causing you to rush your downswing. So if you get to the top of the swing, and everything feels really quick and out of tempo, out of timing, there's a very important thing you wanna do with that first move down. And I wanna show you how to do that. I have a great video I'm gonna play for you here in a second. It's a preview of that. 
If you want to see that full video, all you need to do is go ahead and click one of the cards that you see on the screen. If you don't see one of those cards, don't worry. Just go down to the link down below in the description. You'll get access to that, that full video. I'll get you to stop rushing that downswing, smooth out that transition. And if you pair that up with what we worked on here today, not only are you gonna have a great looking backswing, but it's gonna be buttery smooth. You're gonna feel like you're in complete control and people are gonna really comment on just how in timing and sequence your swing is. So I'm gonna go play a preview of that video now. Let's go ahead and get started. Just go ahead and click that car, card and I'll see you soon. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being outdriven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 